Welcome to the first episode of Issues Insights, a series where we look at some of the most interesting issues out there, from GitHub to GitLab to proprietary issue trackers, even to your favorite mailing lists. We'll cover them all. We expect to produce at least one episode of this series every 10 years, so buckle up as we dive into today's issue from Valve. The Linux version of Steam unintentionally RMRFing or recursively force deleting someone's entire computer. Steam for Linux has changed a lot since 2015, but here is how it worked back in the day. You first install Steam, after which you can run the binary file called Steam found in the directory slash user slash bin to start the client. This binary does not contain the full Steam application, but invokes files in the installation directory called Steam Roots in each user's home. Before getting too deep, let's take a high-level view of the Linux file system. First, there is the root directory, which as we know contains everything. Then we see that user bin contains user programs like Steam compared to slash bin, which usually contains programs essential for the operating system to function. The home directory, abbreviated as a tilde and located at slash home slash name, works as you'd expect and is where each user stores all of their stuff. In each user's home is the Steam root directory where Steam installs itself and stores its games. It also has an important script called steam.sh, which is what the Steam binary invokes to configure and launch Steam. After setting everything up, the script will then invoke the main executable called steam.exe. All three of these entry points can technically be used to start Steam directly, just for different purposes and with certain limitations. Anyways, on January 14th, 2015, Keevan opened an issue on the Steam for Linux GitHub repo stating the following. I moved the Steam folder to a drive mounted somewhere else and symlinked the original directory to the new location. Symlinks or symbolic links are just special files which point to the file or directory that they are linked to. These are kind of like shortcuts, except symlinks are completely transparent to the application layer as the operating system automatically resolves it to the target. So we can kind of see what Kevin was trying to do here. Move the Steam folder to a drive with better performance or storage capacity and create the symlink so applications can still find that folder using the original path. Then I launch Steam. It did not launch. It offered to let me browse and still cannot find it when I pointed it to the new location. Steam crashed. I restarted it. It reinstalled itself and everything looked great. Until I looked and saw that Steam had apparently deleted everything owned by my user recursively from the roots directory, including my 3TB external drive I back everything up to. Doofy then follows up with a reply, having encountered the same issue. This is terrible. I just lost my home directory. All I did was start steam.sh with the steam debug flag enabled. If you recall, steam.sh is the helper script located in Steam root that can be used to start Steam. After a bit of digging in the script, they found a line which runs rmrf for the Steam root directory. One line above this command was the comment scary, indicating that this was a very scary operation. Soon enough, TCM1911 chimed in with a hypothesis. This Steam root variable must have somehow been an empty string, causing the rmrf arguments to be the roots directory. Taking a closer look at Steam root, this enclosing dollar sign in parentheses is a command substitution where the output of the commands run inside will substitute the expression and thus be assigned to Steam root. So what is the output? Well, it's what's going to be echoed or printed, in this case the current working directory signified by this pwd environments variable. The working directory of a script is where it is run from, not where the script is located. If you execute a script from the temp directory, the working directory returned by pwd will be temp. So the strategy here is to first change directory or cd to the directory of the script and then print the working directory. We have another OS provided environment variable zero, which refers to the path of the script being executed. Then this percent signifies you want to remove the preceding pattern from the end of the preceding string. The pattern here is a forward slash followed by a wildcard. So from the preceding string, which is the path of the script, we start from the end and delete the first slash we see, followed by everything after it. In this case, we delete the name of the file, leaving us with the Steam Roots directory. But this appears to work. What causes it to return an empty string? You see, if any part of this command fails prior to the echo, the command substitution will output nothing, and therefore nothing will be assigned to Steam Root. 
RXC dude notes that the command definitely fails in such a way when running the script directly with bash like so. Why is this the case? Normally when you run a script in Linux by invoking its path, the kernel will detect that it is an interpreter script since it starts with a shebang specifying which interpreter to use. Then it will invoke the interpreter with the script path as the first argument. This first argument is what the environment variable zero we talked about previously refers to. However, bash and similar shells allow you to run a script by passing a plain file name into the command as long as it's in the current directory. This will start a new bash shell and run the script using the file name as the first argument, which results in a $0 variable that is an invalid path. Here is the phenomenon in action. We run the same script, but in the second case, it only prints a file name, not a valid path. This causes the directory change command to error out and return no output, setting steam root as an empty string, causing rmrf to delete the root directory's contents. At this point, most were satisfied and began suggesting fixes, discussing how terrible the code was, and wondering how it was possible for Kaven to be so cool and collected. But wait, this recursive deletion is in reset steam. Why was this function called in the first place? Reset steam is only invoked under two circumstances. First, the user can intentionally pass the reset flag into the script. Given the bug report did not mention the reset flag, let's take a closer look at the other case. All of these conditions need to be met, as indicated by the AND operator between each condition. Only one of them is important, the rest is just housekeeping, so let's get the obvious ones out of the way first. Initial launch just verifies there isn't already a Steam process running, so this is easily true. Next, current status must not be set to this magic exit code, which is just a variable to ensure that this doesn't get stuck in an infinite loop. Next, the Steam starting file must exist, and it should exist since nothing has been done to the Steam config folder where it is located. Lastly, it just confirms that the Steam script is not out of date, which should be expected. So the key condition which triggers reset Steam is that this installed bootstrap environment variable has to be an empty string, which is the default value for an unset variable. Before the reset Steam check, SteamSH should run the main executable Steam.exe, which sets this variable to 1 after installing some bootstrap software. The developers intended for Reset Steam to trigger if Steam EXE failed to do this, indicating something went wrong. However, in this case, nothing was wrong with Steam EXE. It was just executed with a path that is based on Steam root, which we've already established is set incorrectly as an empty string due to the other bug. So SteamSH fails to run the main executable at all since it has the wrong path. The installed bootstrap environment variable is not exported and remains blank. All the conditions of the if statement are met. And then reset steam is called. So now we know how to trigger the bug. Run steam.sh inline with a shell like bash. This explains what happened to Doofy who clearly ran steam.sh. But how does this play into Kaven's original account? who only mentioned launching the main Steam binary. Well, a Valve employee had a hypothesis. Kevin first moved Steam to an NTFS drive, which being made for Windows doesn't play nice with the Linux file system and would strip the executable bit in the version of Ubuntu used here. This causes the Steam binary to inevitably fail and crash as it cannot execute anything in the drive. Then he gets really annoyed and runs bash steam sh, and most importantly, he gets amnesia and forgets he ever ran such a command. Keevan replies that he only ran steam normally, and he wasn't even sure if that line was the culprit, which makes sense given that from his perspective he never ran steam.sh. Furthermore, he recalls he may have mounted the drive with options to allow execution of all files, which is reasonable given that Valve software themselves have tutorials to mount NTFS drives in this way. And of course, he is still very calm and collected. However, the exact play-by-play -play actions cannot be confirmed since the computer with all of its configurations was wiped. So what now? I suppose all we can do is guess, as I have my own never-seen-before theory to how this all happened. So it all started on a stormy Wednesday evening when Kaven finished cooking up his lasagna and heads to the computer room to work on his new gaming setup. After setting everything up, he attempts to run Steam but Steam fails to run. Not because the NTFS drive did not add the executable bit, but because Kievan created the symlink incorrectly in home slash local rather than home slash local slash share, where Steam root is supposed to be. 
this is a fairly easy typo to make, as he made the same mistake on the GitHub issue he created. He realizes his mistake and fixes the symlink, creating it in the proper folder and reruns Steam. While Steam is still starting up, he absentmindedly goes to clean up the incorrect symlink because why not, and forgets that he ever did so. But unbeknownst to him, he actually accidentally unlinks the correct symlink instead. In a stunning race condition, he manages to do this in the literal microseconds after steam.sh is invoked, but before the assignment of steam root, and since the symlinked path no longer exists, the directory change fails, and steam root remains an empty string. And we've already established that if steam root is an empty string, the bug will trigger. To fix the bug, various alterations to the steam root command, such as using readlink or durname, can guarantee a valid path is returned, and checks can be added to verify steam root is a real path. Furthermore, bash has built-in options which make the shell exit when a command fails. So when the directory change or steam exe execution fails, the script immediately ends instead of proceeding with buggy behavior. These are what ended up being the actual fix, but many disagreed that this was enough. Some suggested to write all the scripts in a real language like Python or Perl, or check for typical Linux directories, look up files from an internal database, and only remove known files, not writing amateur hour code, never use RMRF, use an empty file as a marker, don't use the wildcard, you should just lock this thread, just don't delete user data, by the way here's my public domain script that has my preferred fix, Valve has no idea how to Linux, has this problem been fixed? It's still happening. Question mark? You know, we could talk for centuries about the ideal way to fix this, but sometimes you don't need to achieve perfection. Anyways, it's been like 9 years, and the issue hasn't resurfaced for anyone except this guy, but he didn't provide further evidence, so we can mark this issue resolved. See you in the next issue of Issues Insights.